Hello wonderful people, it is Genevieve and in this video we're going to learn how to paint fire. And this video is part of a digital art course that I designed as a month-long YouTube series, so it is totally free. And you can definitely choose to only watch this one video if all you care about is how to paint fire. Or you can take on the challenge of improving our art skills by drawing along with the community every day. And if you want to do that, make sure to check out my website where the full schedule for the entire challenge is going to be. And also make sure to subscribe as well as ring the bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming textures that are going to be part of this course. All you need for this tutorial is some sort of a digital art software and I will be using Procreate on the iPad Pro. But you can definitely use pretty much anything that has layers in it. So Photoshop, Corel Painter, Krita, Affinity Designer. Honestly, most mainstream and not even like that mainstream <laughs> digital art software uh, will do for this tutorial. I will be suggesting just really basic digital art brushes. So basically the one that come with your software, they're definitely going to work. And I will also include a free color palette in the description below, but otherwise you can pick your own colors if that's more what you're into. And if you are watching this video in uh, the course, you also need to set aside, I would say 15 to 25 minutes, depending on whether you are on day 25 or 26 of the program. And with that being said, let's start drawing. So the first thing you will want to do is to create a new canvas and the size is totally up to you depending on what you're using this illustration for. If you're just practicing, I recommend something like 2000 per 2000 pixels. I also recommend setting your background to a neutral color if you're just practicing. So if you have the color palette, any of the grays on the right hand side are neutral grays. Otherwise, you just pick a gray <laughs> that you like. And as usual, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our layers. So start by creating a new layer that you're going to rename to ground light. You're going to change the blending mode of this layer to add. And you're also going to lower the opacity somewhere around 70%. The next layer you're going to create is going to be renamed base. And you're going to change the blending mode to um, lighter color. And you're going to lower the opacity this time around 50 to 60%, somewhere in that range. We're going to tweak it later, so don't worry too much about it. The next layer you're going to create is going to be renamed back. And you're going to change the blending mode of this one to add and lower the opacity around 75%. Again, no need to be super precise here. The next layer you're going to create is going to be renamed to middle or mid or center or whatever. <laughs> this one is also going to be add and you're going to leave the blending or the opacity, I should say, to 100%. And the last layer you're going to create is going to be renamed front or top, whatever you're the most comfortable with. And you're going to change the blending mode of this one to add as well. And the opacity is going to be somewhere between 80 and 90%. Oh, and I lied, there's one more layer. <laughs> this one is going to be renamed to details. This one is also going to be set to add and you're gonna leave the opacity to 100%. So as usual, we're gonna start by drawing our base. And for that, I highly recommend that you just use a nice uh, orange color. And I'm gonna use my regular dry ink brush from Procreate. And if you have Procreate, I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you, there's this flame brush that does a really good job at mimicking the effect of fire, but it's hard to control. And so if you want to fire it as a specific shape, uh, learning how to draw it yourself is definitely going to be helpful. It really is super easy. So there's no reason not to do it, honestly. Um, definitely worth it. So make sure you stick around until the end because you're going to notice and realize that it's just like super easy. It's probably the easiest tutorial in, um, in this course, honestly. So <laughs> that being said, the first thing you want to do is just kind of sketch out the shape your fire um, is going to be. And for that, you want a solid shape. So you don't want to have any texture in it. You just want to make sure that you fill it in. And the shape is going to depend on the size of the fire. You know, if you have a, just like a flame on top of a match or a candle, it's going to be very simple, almost an oval kind of shape. If you have a bonfire, it's going to be way more complex. The one thing that I recommend doing, or keeping in mind at least, is this idea that your fire is dancing and i know that sounds a bit weird <laughs> but that's really what's going to give your fire a lot of life is if you make sure that there are different curves that curve in different directions and are kind of opposite to each other so that it feels like there's a lot of movement in your fire and it's just going to make 
a world of difference, really. So once you have a base that is kind of interesting, we're gonna make it more interesting um, by selecting this back layer as well as just the same orange that you've been using so far. And you're gonna draw almost the same shape as your base layer, but just with slight differences, mostly in the ends of the flames on the top of your fire. And the way we're building this fire is we're kind of compounding on two different effects to make the light effect. So on each layer we're going to draw, we're going to go with a lighter orange or yellow kind of color. And we're also using add, which is a blending mode. And basically what it does is whenever you have two layers that overlap, the overlap, like overlapping area is going to become like super bright. So using lighter colors from one layer to the other and add is going to give us this really cool fire effect. So let's test it out by changing our layer. So go ahead and select your middle layer and select a lighter version of your orange. And you're going to paint this time fairly different flames, mostly on the bottom. So if you if you look at fire pictures or just like if you light up a like a candle at your place, you're going to notice that the bottom part of the fire is the lightest. And if you get to a really, really hot fire, it's actually going to turn blue. So that's also something that is very important to keep in mind if you want your fire to look like fire. <laughs> it's to make sure that the closer to the bottom, the lighter it gets. And at this step, it's also really cool to start making flames a bit thinner to add more dimension. And don't worry about the like the details too much because later we're going to come in and change the opacity of the layers and we're also going to... Um, use the smudge tool to make everything blend together a little bit better. So at this stage, we're just kind of building the base. Once you're done with this layer, go ahead and select the other one. So the front layer and a lighter version of your orange. And once again, you're going to use the same technique. So you're going to draw even smaller flames um, in front of everything. And again, you want to make sure that you have some movement. So you want to make sure that yes, you kind of follow the main pattern of the fire, but it's also cool to have some flames that have just like their own like a mind of their own basically and that are poking out or uh just use like basically have a different curvature to them and since this is going to be a very very bright layer make sure that those flames are mostly on the bottom part again that's going to help with the overall fire effect great so now's the time to make everything look good <laughs> so you've built your, your layers now we're gonna make everything look like fire and to do that, go ahead and select your smudge tool, which is usually um, the icon with a finger in most digital art software anyway. And I use the stucco brush for Procreate, but honestly, whichever smudge tool you have and you're used to working with is going to be just fine. And all you're doing here is you're going to help the flame flow a little bit better and blend in a little bit better by very simply dragging your pencil over the curves that are already there and kind of dragging the color upwards. So make sure you peek at the video if you're a bit confused, but it's a very super easy step. Like it's, it's very simple. You're just basically uh, following the lines of what you already have. But it's going to make your piece come alive and right now we're just starting with the top or the front layer but we're going to redo or we're going to use the same technique over all of our layers except the base and you're going to see that your fire is going to transform right before your eyes so once your top layer looks really nicely blended go ahead and select your middle layer and you're doing the same thing <laughs> so you're just very gently dragging your color uh, from the base of the fire towards the top of the flames and you do want to get some of that grit that kind of poke out but you also want to make sure that you do retain some of the edges because you don't want to have just like a very very soft and overly blended fire you do want to keep some of that um, sharpness sharpness not really really the right word but you want to make sure that you see the flames distinctly basically <laughs> And you guessed it, once you're done with your middle layer, go ahead and select your back layer and you're going to be doing the exact same thing. So you see, I was not lying when I was saying that drawing fire is super easy and fairly quick as well. Uh, you just have to draw a few layers. If you use the blending modes, it's pretty much just 
a super straightforward process that's gonna allow you to draw a fire in any shape or form that your heart might desire. One thing that really is super helpful as well is playing with the opacity of your layers. So what I was saying in the beginning uh, to not really worry too much about the opacity setting is exactly because of this. Um, once you're done blending everything or smoothing or smudging everything, however you want to call it, go ahead and play with the opacity level of your layers until you get something that looks really good. You also want to make sure that your front layer is not totally white because you're then going to select your detail layer as well as the same super bright orange color, not quite white, just like this bright orange color. And you're going to add these very thin lines that are going to show up as like super, super bright. Uh, I mean, white. <laughs> On, on top of your flames. And that's, that's really the way you're gonna be able to add a lot of dimension and even more movement to your fire. So to do it, uh, one thing you can definitely do that is super easy is to completely cover the bottom part of your fire since this is the part that is supposed to be the brightest and makes sense that it is white. And you're then going to draw some S curves uh, with a fairly small brush size over your uh, well, your, your flames. So as you can see, this has a so much dimension, both because you add really clear lines, which adds, you know, movement, but also because you're adding a whole other range of, uh, like, hues, well, not hues, this is white, but basically you're adding even more contrast in your piece, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> In this layer, you could either leave it as is or use the smudge tool very, very carefully to blend some of the little lines, not all of them. And so at this point, what we have pretty much looks like fire, but this next step, believe me, is going to really bring what you have to the next level. And it's, I mean, it's insanely easy. You're just going to add little dots of like little pieces of fire, whatever they're called, I'm not sure. Uh, flying away from your main fire. So you want to group them, I would say, in groups of one, two, or three, and you kind of sprinkle them around the top of your flames. And you can also have some over your, your main fire. So yes, you want to have some outside to show, you know, that there's a lot of movement outside of your fire, but adding them on top of your flames is also really cool because it really helps the piece feel like complete, finished, properly detailed, and um, yeah, just just really nice. The last little thing you can do, and in my case, I'm just going to move this fire around a little bit so I have room to show you the last step. But the last step is to select your ground light layer, as well as your uh, super bright orange that you use for the middle layer. And you're going to add this kind of light around the base of your fire. And to do that, I recommend a very simple, soft brown brush. And you're just basically highlighting the ground around and below your fire, uh, just to situate it in, in the scene. Uh, in this case, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because it's in, in the middle of just like a gray background. But even if we just have this gray background, adding the ground light make the fire feel supported or it makes it feel like it's resting on something instead of just floating up in the air and so yeah that's a very simple step that's going to make a big difference uh no matter where you're drawing your fire definitely make sure to do that at the end so this was how to draw fire in pretty much any digital art software out there if you are following the full program, make sure to come back to this video for day 26. So day 25, which was today, was all about drawing fire just in a very simple way. Day 26 is about drawing it in context. So either like a full on bonfire or a candle, anything like that. And you're just going to follow the exact same steps and techniques. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really does help the channel. And before you leave, don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos like this one every week, especially during the month of January, where we're going to cover a total of 13 different textures spread across five teams. So make sure not to miss that and I will see you soon.